What's good, you guys? Zach Dowdy here, and today's video is going to be all about the best backyard skate parks. All these skate parks are on the private property of professional skateboarders and celebrities. I think today is like week five, I've lost count of quarantine, which led me into this tunnel of thinking like, what houses would I want to be locked in during a quarantine? The first thing that came to my mind was Tony Hawk. He has the most amazing backyard, but I think a lot has changed since he first built his backyard. I actually got the opportunity once to go to Tony Hawk's house. It was amazing, but I actually didn't get a skate. I was there with the skateboard mag I was working for at the time, and we got to surprise Riley Hawk with his first pro board. So first person on this list is Brad Pitt. Might be a little bit of a shocker. I just felt like this deserved to be on the list of amazing backyard skate parks because it has a full-blown crate on the backyard. Like, I'm not sure how many backyards have a full-blown 14-foot cradle in their backyard. So next up on this list is Skatopia. I'm sure all of you have heard of Skatopia. I would say it's almost more than a backyard skate park. It's like a skateboarding city. It's 88 acres of anarchy. That's the documentary they made about Skatopia. If you want to know more about this wild place, check out the documentary. It's insane. Skatopia has been featured on MTV, Viva La Bam, I think True Life it was on. Skatopia property is owned by pro skateboarder Bruce Martin. They've also had some of the most insane skateboarding events there. Like, first thing that comes to my mind is Thrasher's King of the Road. That's where Clint Walker smashes the van. I probably wouldn't want to be stuck there right now, but at the same time, can you imagine if you were? Third on this list is Shane O'Neill, the tech master machine. It really is no surprise that his backyard is basically like a street league skate park. It looks like a street league course almost, straight up just textbook style. I have seen some interviews with Shane saying that when he originally built his backyard skate park that it was too hard to even skate, like he just couldn't have fun and enjoy it. So he had to kind of like rearrange and restyle some things and California skate parks also built his backyard as well. Fourth on the most amazing backyard skate park is the Woods Resident in Texas. This is no exception. This is a straight up full blown skate park in the backyard. It is amazing. Put me on lockdown there and I will never play and it's all good. And it's a little bit smaller than some of the other ones I mentioned on this list so far, but they compacted so many good obstacles in such a small compact space that you can have so much diversity. So you whether you want to skate the bowl or transition or you want to skate the A-frame or the bump. The sixth one on this list is private. I can't give you too much information about this it is built by Kyle Burrard and Front Rock Concrete. Some people just want their stuff to stay private. I wish I could provide more information about every single one of these skate parks and most insane backyard skate parks but I also just wanted to show you them visually because a lot of this information people want to stay private you know and I don't want to go exploiting people's names if they don't already want it out there so it's more so just to get inspiration and see like what is out there and what does exist it's pretty insane. This amazing masterpiece is known as the Qatar Bowl. Seventh on the list is Kelvin Helfner. I'm gonna butcher this name so bad, but he is a Street League champion winner. This backyard looks really cool. It's really basic. There's not much to it. Sometimes simple obstacles can do a lot more than having a lot of technical obstacles. His backyard was put on by OC ramps. It looks like they put it all together really quickly too. And it's kind of nice that you can almost dismantle and move things around as well. Eighth on this list is Chris Cole. It's no surprise that the guy is a, again, kind of like Shane, a master of techery, a wizardry, which is a really hard thing to have so consistently locked down. But if you look at his backyard skate park, it is so amazing. It's really cool how it flows. Like it's like one shotgun style of skate park where you start on one end and you and you end up on the other, which I do really like about that. Less about one trick and more about doing lines and consistency and just enjoying your backyard as well. Chris Cole's backyard is built by California Skate Parks as well. And it looks like it comes in about 8,000 square feet, just 400 shy of Shane's. Ninth on this list is Kevin Kowalski's house. I've actually been to Kevin's backyard before. It's really amazing. It's like you're in a dense forest and you're just skating this pool. And like some of the other backyard skate parks that look really fun, there's no flat ground. The only flat ground that he has is for a drain because he's in Oregon to let all that water get out. I actually made a video with Kevin and some of the original builders that did this backyard. I'll leave a link in the bio. As you're working your way down, you go through a double doorway area, which I've never seen before Kevin's house. I think he might be the first person to ever have two doors, doorway, kind of obstacle like that. I think that's the first one ever, pretty sure. All right, it's a grand finale. Whew, the grand finale, who do we give it to? Leave a comment down below with all the backyard skate parks that I've forgotten. There was a lot of different comments and 
feedback I got from my Instagram post asking people what they thought their best backyards were. But I try to pick the most diverse ones that I would want to be stuck in. So definitely let me know any other that I forgot. So let's get down to the final, con final number 10, the one that I think is the best, Bob Bernquist's Dreamland. It is amazing. I mean, this is the most insane backyard skate park ever built. He can film full on video parts back there. He's actually talked about it on the nine, his nine club interview. He mentions how like, you know, filming all his entire video part back there and just the process of doing that. So check that out if you haven't already, it's insane. Now I know there isn't too much street at Bob's house. So that can be something that's like considered right here, but I've been there before and there is a lot of deck area where he has flat rails and boxes and things like that, that are just not really seen as much because look what else is around. I mean, it's insane. The concrete vert ramp bowl now, like it's just insane what he has in his backyard. Ultimately, you would never be bored. Not that you can get bored anywhere. Like I could have fun in a 10 feet by 10 feet area on a skateboard and be completely satisfied. But just saying the, the the possibilities and the opportunities would be endless in that backyard. All right, that's it for this quick five minute Friday video. I just wanted to show you guys some of the backyard skate parks that I was checking out and I thought were insane. Hopefully it sparked you to get some things going in your backyard. You don't need to build Bob Burnquist's dreamland, but just build even anything, maybe a curb. I'm still working on the backyard, it's coming. I think I'm gonna work on building my own first DIY curb this weekend. I've never really done curb forms, forms for curves, but I'm excited to maybe try to build one of those this week Weekend, and I got a curb going the other day made a video about that and that was really fun So I'm working on my slappies. They're not good. They're still pretty weak But uh, I guess that's just an update on my life hit that like button if you enjoyed this video Thanks for watching subscribe if you're not already and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one mash stay on Things are coming don't worry. I know we're on lockdown, but there's still some DIY videos and projects in the work stay tuned